Hello and welcome to this video session. My name is Christian Auer and today I want to demo a StreamSheet use case in industrial IoT. And I want to show how easy it is to work with StreamSheets. Here we see a StreamSheet and a production facility, both running in real time. We produce fluids in batches of different sizes and we use a StreamSheet to monitor the process and to create a production log in MongoDB. On this slide, you can see how our use case is set up. On the left, we see the production plant, which sends sensor data via the MQTT protocol. The stream sheet processes the data and stores the consolidated data from each batch as a record in a MongoDB database. Here we see the production facility in detail. Quantities of liquids with varying batch sizes are filled in a repeating production process. And we have sensors that continuously report the level and the status of the inlet valve. The sensors publish their values every 100 milliseconds to a specific topic on the MQTT broker. The stream sheet recalculates its cells exactly at the same frequency. The sensor data is in JSON format and it's directly and dynamically linked to the stream sheet cells. For each batch, the stream sheet writes a record to a MongoDB database. The record contains the start time, the duration, the size, and the value of each batch, all calculated by simple spreadsheet formulas in the sheet. At the end, the database will contain as many records as tanks have been filled up. Now I will show you how easy it is to build a stream sheet for this. You can see that I've already filled the stream sheet with some labels and some charts. Our gateway enables the production facility to publish its sensor data to the MQTT broker. In the inbox, you can see the flow of messages arriving. They arrive every 100 milliseconds. Now we drag the sensor value for the tank level to a cell on the stream sheet. Well, when we dropped the JSON field, it automatically created a read function with the JSON key as one of its arguments, where we are now editing the syntax and we create a reference to the tank label in cell A4, so that we can later copy this formula. In cell B7, we multiply the fill level sensor value, which is always between 0 and 10, by R squared and by pi, so that it calculates the fill volume of the tank. Well, then we need the open-close status of the fill valve. To do this, we drag the corresponding JSON field on the sheet. A closed valve has the value 0, open valve the value 10. As already mentioned, we'd later like to reuse the read formula when we copy the formulas for the other three tanks to the right. The trick is that when we do the autofill later, the autofill will create labels for tank 2, tank 3, tank 4 automatically. That's why we added the formula syntax here. Now it's about detecting the moment when a batch begins. Here we use the edge detect function. This function returns true exactly in the millisecond where the condition was first fulfilled. This is the case in the one calculation cycle where the value of the valve in cell B8 changes to 10. The same is done in cell B13 to identify a closing valve. The edge detect function in cell B13 will return true when BA changes to 0. Let's go to B17. Here in cell B17, we want the label of the tank, so we just refer to A4. In cell B18, we catch the timestamps for the start of each batch. We use an if function, which refers to cell B12, to do the job. To understand the logic, you have to know that a stream sheet always evaluates its cells from the top left to the bottom right. This is why in cell B19, we get the current time only when cell B13 is true. Otherwise, the old cell value will be the new cell value. In cell B20, we use the timestamps in cell B18 and B19 to calculate the duration of the batch cycle. Well, we only do that when a production batch is done. So we let the if function check the value in cell B13. In addition, we also convert the serial time value in milliseconds. 
by multiplying the resulting time serial with the conversion factor. In cell B21, we use the if function to ensure that we always set the fill level to zero at the beginning of a production batch. If cell B12 tells us that we are within a production cycle, we use a max function to check if the new fill level is greater than the current one that we do for each cycle. Cell B22 is easy. Here we only define the price per hectoliter. In cell B23, we calculate the resulting value for each production lot. We do this simply by multiplying the values of cell B21 and cell B22. Now we have the consolidated data for each batch, and we can save it in MongoDB. But since MongoDB is expecting the JSON format, we use the context menu to, to declare our formula range as a JSON range. After that, we can simply use a wizard and a predefined function to permanently save the JSON base data in a collection in a MongoDB database. In the wizard, we choose uh, Mongo store and a stream, uh, which a predefined connection to a Mongo database. Then we specify liquid log as the target collection and our range in cell A17 to B23 as the JSON data to be saved. That's all. Of course, we do not want to store the data at every recalculation cycle of the stream sheet. Instead, we only want to send the data in the millisecond when a production batch is actually finished. So we have to sell, have to use the cell B13 again. And we simply embrace the Mongo store function with an if function, which depends on cell B13. Well, because we are connected to MongoDB, uh, we can use Mongo Express to take a quick look at the database. And yes, here we have our JSON based records, exactly the same way as we would expect them. In the last step, we want to apply the newly created formulas not only to tank one, but also to the other three tanks. We can achieve this by applying the autofill command to the right. So, so let's do this. And takes a few seconds. And, well, voila. And now the data of all four tanks is processed and sent to the database, where we can query the data later. Of course, we'll have another look at Mongo Express. There we should now also find the data from the other tanks. And right here, for example, we have the data of tank four. Since the stream sheet is running on the server as a microservice, it will run from now on day and night, even if we close the web browser. But we're not doing that now, because I want to show you what a stream sheet looks like when it's not in developer mode. I simulate this here in this uh, dialog. A few clicks and well, this is how the stream sheet would look like for a user who logs in without developer rights. Yes, that was it for today. In a future session, I will show you how to use stream sheets to get automatic MongoDB queries, like the total production value per hour, week or similar. Thanks for the attention. See you soon.